what, what they think it can do? If they we think it can change your voice, not just turn you into a train. They're really weird. Whistle, but it might be a little unpleasant for other people. I have no control over that. I'm joking. Everyone's weird. I love you. Everyone's weird. Welcome to the I'm so happy that I'm you. I also got this. Don't have any batteries. Don't have any like slight. Welcome to the internet. Have a look around. Hold on, hold on, buddy. I've got some ideas. Is there an open spot here? Try it again. Go ahead. I think we got Max. We're almost Max. We need to boost the range of my surprise at Prime Max. Yo, slide this all. Yeah, we're maxed out. I can't see one B over the. Over the uh, whatever you call that part of the stage. Here she comes. Oh shit! Thank you, Parker. There she is. Shout out to Parker and the trains. Big announcement: We're now officially the Trains Academy. Just kidding. We were on April Fools though. It was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we're about to get started. Um. So, so nice to see everybody. It's still so surreal to me. Just everything that's happened over the past two years. Um, I remember when we started this. It was just. It was just a few of us and um like even going back before that uh, i'd like to talk a little bit about like the motivations that kind of led up to starting a trans academy and like some of our inspirations um i remember it was summer of 2022 and um, my dad had just been diagnosed with stage four cancer and i had previously lost my mom a year before um, to cancer as well and i was in a very very dark place um and it was one of those times in my life where I had to decide, do I want to allow myself to be consumed by the darkness? Or is it something that I want to transmute into something that can uplift others and create beauty and love and unite people? And one day I just decided to start sketching out ideas. Um, one of the things that really motivated me was seeing uh, We Met in Virtual Reality which is the show on HBO that really kind of highlighted communities like Helping Hands and just seeing like what they were doing in VR chat to create accessibility uh, and just seeing the power of social VR for uniting people. And I would see so many trans people here in VR chat just everywhere. I would go into public instances, I'd go just everywhere. And we were everywhere, but we were also kind of nowhere at the same time. We didn't really have a central place. And I remember going through search and being like, I need to find a trans place. I want to find other trans people to hang out with. And this just didn't exist. Um, so one day on my way out to go see my dad, um, you know, to take care of him while he was going through his cancer, I. I grabbed my laptop and I just like opened up the back of my SUV and I just like hung out in like nature and beauty and just allowed myself to be inspired. And I just started plugging away in Unity. And I didn't know where any of this was gonna go. You know, it's at first it just started as a, a few of us. You know, we were hanging around in the coffee shop and uh, things just started happening. It was just completely surreal. I mean, people started coming in and offering to help. Um, and then the community sort of collectively said, like, yes, this is something that we want. Um, so the, the Trans Academy is not something that is the result of, like, any one person, especially myself. Like, this has absolutely been a team effort. This place does not exist without our lead and without our hardworking staff. And most importantly, it doesn't exist without the community and people participating and sharing that love with each other. And y'all have changed my life like for real like the trans academy has been such a big part of, of my life over the past two years and i cannot thank you enough i am so grateful for everything that we've experienced here i'm so grateful to have met all of you and the most exciting thing is that we're just at the beginning this is just the start of something that's going to be really important because right now in the world there's a lot of hate 
There's a lot of pushback against our existence. And I think that we have an opportunity to come together and be united. And we are stronger together as a community. And VR chat is facilitating the ability for us to have that level of immersion that allows us to feel that togetherness. I think it is the coolest use of technology that we have right now with VR. I mean, people talk about VR chat being like the memes and the mirror dwelling and all that. And of course it is all of those things, but it is also so much more because VR chat at the end of the day is just people, you know, it's a digital projection of humanity into this space. All these pixels are just representative of the real souls who we are in real life. And that's what makes this place real. It's what makes it meaningful and beautiful. And again, I'm just so grateful to have been a part of this. And I'm just, I'm really excited where we're going. Uh, I don't know what the future looks like. You know, we we have plans for the group and things that we wanna do. But again, it's like when we started this thing, we had no idea that we were gonna have, you know, 33,000 members and, you know, be doing classes and be a nonprofit and all this. We're just sort of seeing where it goes one day at a time and, uh, I do think that this is going to be the, uh, something that's going to be bigger. We're going to start doing more real life outreach as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I put together a little presentation for you today. So we're, we're going to go through some of those slides, but uh, thank you for listening to my story. Yay. All right. Yippee. 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 All right, so just a little look back. Do, do, do. Okay, I know I talked a little bit about like how things got started. This is that's me sitting in the back of my SUV on a road trip. I just busted out my laptop and started plugging away at Unity. Um, I was actually um, in the parking lot at the hospital wearing my Quest 2 and I was binge watching Little Witch Academia. And I just got so inspired by the story because at the end of the day, that story is one of resilience in the face of hardship. And I felt like it resonated so deeply with what I was going through. And I feel like that's something that also resonates with what a lot of us are going through. I mean, the past four years have been really tough. And I just think that like, it's such a thing that applies to what a lot of trans people go through. And it's such a beautiful story, but you can see here, like, you know, this is me doing some rough sketches of like, the early Academy. And this was like very, very early on. Hmm, it's kind of here. And uh, right. so this Ooh, is actually this what is the Academy, this is what the Academy looks like on day one. Um, we didn't have any buildings. There was no coffee shop. It was just it was just a bridge and like a little square. Uh, but sort of like what I wanted to signify with this was like crossing that ravine of like who we were to who we become. And so that's kind of what the bridge signifies. Uh, it's also a really good tool for trust and safety to ban trolls as they come in. But yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a cattle shoot. But I'm so excited about some stuff I'm going to talk about soon. But yeah, you can see uh, this is like some of some of the familiar faces from like the first week. This is when the Academy was brand, brand new, like. So funny story, the sharks were actually never supposed to be a flying object. Uh, it was supposed to be a broom, um, but uh, it was just something that I had handy to throw the script into. And then people were like, no, keep the sharks. And I'm like, okay, now it's a thing. So that's why we have flying sharks. All right, uh, just a little review of like where we're at. Um, we've grown a little bit, maybe just a little bit, but at the end of the day, our mission is the same as day one. And that is creating accessible trans resources. Uh, and kind of going back to what I was saying about just VR chat, allowing people to have that like sense of togetherness, just wherever you're at. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of nowhere, as long as you have like a phone or a quest, you can log in and you can be a part of this community. And I think that's so important. It's kind of like a first, you know, having that level of immersion um, and access to a community like that. We, we want to make the most of that. 
here at the academy and so all of our future planning is kind of surrounding that like how do we bring the most value and how do we bring like the most connection to people who otherwise wouldn't have access to that and so one of the things that really inspired the academy uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about this in our next panel with uh, gina bigham from the uh, lgbt center in los angeles uh, was trans lounge now trans lounge was a program that was started back in 2015 at the center and it was pretty innovative in that it was built around trans education and it's actually where i got my start doing voice training uh, with a teacher by the name of andrea james um, and she was a teacher there and it was almost like the trans academy in real life and so very inspirational for our existence today and i'm very excited to have the director of that joining us today for a, a panel after this uh, where we're going to be talking a little bit about the differences between running a real life and a, a virtual center for trans people so that's going to be fun and trans academy 2.0 I am so excited about this. Um, one of the things Whoa. that we really want to do is make the Academy super optimized and super gorgeous for every platform. So we're going to be targeting all these down here, uh, including mobile, because we want to be able to bring our resources to as many people as possible. Uh, I highly encourage everybody here to join the World Teams panel tomorrow with a, a Kimbo and QB. They're going to be really diving into what they're working on with the new world and showing off some more pictures. So definitely would suggest attending that. And I just wanted to give a huge I'm thank you that. to Jason and crew at EOZ for being so supportive of the Academy. They have been amazing to work with. They are the coolest people, um, very, very good allies. And uh, also it, it has enabled us to do a lot of fun things in the future. We actually have some really cool plans for the funds that we were able to raise because of EOZ. And uh, a few, few of our members <laughs> wearing the straps. And one more thing that I want to mention. As y'all may know, we had our little, <laughs> we had our feature um, in June for Pride where uh, VR Chat was gracious enough to allow us to have a little banner in the menu. Uh, and it was an amazing experience and working with VR Chat was so cool. I'm, I'm super grateful uh, that the community team there and the art team was able to help us with that. And. Uh, because of that, we are now working with them on a new project, which is very, very exciting. Uh, we are going to be doing a Pride sticker collab. Um, as y'all know, um, Stickers is coming to, to VRChat. Uh, Straz has a really good video uh, about that in one of our recent developer updates. And uh, the Academy is going to be working with VRChat's art team on delivering built-in pride theme stickers. So they will be inherently a part of the client and, and built-in, and uh, we're gonna have a whole variety of them. So that's just one example. And, uh, and that's it, that's my little presentation. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody again for, for coming out and being a part of this community. And we have some really cool stuff that's gonna happen in the future. Um, and uh, also, we got one more thing that we're going to demonstrate, but I'm going to call up uh, just Jamie from the media team to come uh, present that. And here's Jamie. Oh my gosh, Thanks all. Suki and Sukeno in the corner. Ooh. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, Bonjour, one second. I speak French. Well, I load up the presentation. Here it is. All right. Hello, Hello, everyone. I'm just Jamie from the media team, and uh, we've been working on a little project to hopefully, hopefully bring some some fun and like life to the academy. You know, lately over the past couple of years, we focused a lot on sort of getting our message out there, getting our name out there, and getting a sort of a cohesive branding, right? Right. But one thing about branding that we all know is that if you focus too much on branding and not enough on the sort of magic of it all, things can start looking a bit corporate. And we don't want that to happen. You know, 
the world itself is beautiful and very inviting and we want to make sure we have an inviting atmosphere in everything that we do including our media and publications so as you can see up here i don't know if any of you remember these cuties um you probably haven't seen them much uh and uh i think that's because thus far we've pretty much only used them in one particular thing and that was the board that uh you may have seen at vcats uh, a couple of vcats ago all right well we'd like to use them more but not only that, we want to make them relatable to the community. We want mascots that we can all see ourselves and each other in. So along with their sort of animal personas, here at the media team, our lovely illustrators and the original um, creator of the animal mascots, who is actually also QB from the world team, we put our heads together and now... Wow. These are also Aww. our mascots. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about them to uh, to a little bit about them to all of you to get to know them. This is Poppy. <laughs> They're a beast keeper. They also have interests in taxidermy and beekeeping as well as aliens. Their secret hobby is the occult. And they also have a cute pet frog. This is Tuto. He is a totem master. He has a huge love of coffee, traveling and souvenir collecting, as well as general arts, history, and writing. His secret hobby is plushy collecting and the fun fact is that he is a polyglot meaning that he speaks multiple languages it doesn't say it on this slide but out of the three mascots he is also the uh teacher uh, of the three so he is a professor here at the trans academy oh gosh he's tall and bun her magic specialty is cutifying. She has a love of books, bond. photography, programming, and 90s nostalgia. Bond. Her secret hobby is actually baking. And her favorite fashion is Decora. We hope you like the new mascots or the new iteration of the mascots and look forward to seeing them more here around Trans Academy. I'd also like to thank our illustrators for the hard work that they put into bringing them to, to life. QB, who created the anim original animal mascots and worked on human Poppy. Zeta, who worked on human Bun. And Ocean Fairy, who worked on human Tuto and also worked on human Poppy. Thank you very much. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. All right, all. Thank you so much for coming to the opening ceremony. We're going to take a little bit of a break and then we will reconvene for uh, the talk with Gina at the LGBT Center. So I'll see y'all soon.